Welcome to Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Landon, and I serve as your host. When you all go out to lunch or dinner, for, for heaven's sake, please listen to the people around the table. There are some remarkable people here in Ventura County doing remarkable things, taking their lives, their care, and putting it into programs here. I was very fortunate. Uh, we were just back from Thailand with uh, Marie, the photographer. Uh, we'd done a lot of good things there, and so she, well, it's, my birthday's coming up. She didn't really hint that much at it. And, and my sister, you need to meet my sister, and, and you need to meet Maddie. So, hi, sis. So, uh, uh, Carolyn Grimm for, and Maddie, can you hi. wave? Wave to there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're hi. looking for. <laughs> so, we started to talk, and mm -hmm. uh, you said, Gosh, you know, I, 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 what, I said, What's your project? Because in Thailand, everybody, every woman has a little project. and. So what's your project and how did you come to it? I see you're wearing purple and we've got a lot to talk about here. Yeah, we're wearing purple. Why, Maddie? Because I have epilepsy. Ah. Uh. So uh, purple is the epilepsy foundation color? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The national color for epilepsy. And um, I s started working for Epilepsy Foundation uh, after I... Um, went to a workshop that they had out here in, um, in Oxnard. Well, there's lots of workshops out there, do you, <laughs> but do you, you know, we, we, but do you have, do you have some personal interest there? I... Well, um, when Maddie was diagnosed with epilepsy, I had no clue of what epilepsy was. And I mean, I saw how it was portrayed in the movies mm -hmm. and all I knew was like, they would drop on the floor and they would shake a little and you would see them foam at the mouth. And, you know, that's my thoughts on epilepsy. And when Maddie was diagnosed, she had this little tick in her eyebrow. Mm -hmm. And we just thought she was tired. And then we saw it progress and we we're just, I didn't realize that she was having seizures. And so we took her to the hospital and she got diagnosed and it was just a life changer. So I had just graduated from ultrasound school and that was no longer my career path. What's well, an electrical storm in there and it's, it's like trying to walk through a forest and I don't know, stranger things or all those things on TV and there's monsters and boom and things crashing but you don't see it on the outside most of the time or some of the time and mm -hmm. all that can be happening there and you just go, why aren't you paying attention to me? Yes. Uh, oh, she's so clumsy. She just walks and then she falls and doctors or something wrong with her muscles, but it's the, the brain is a pretty important place to be. Uh, what does it say on your shirt there? Uh, my, sh my shirt says epilepsy, epilepsy affects anyone with a brain and anyone with a brain affects epilepsy. So we're really looking for the Epilepsy Foundation to get more people, uh, not just educated, but to really uh, do things in California. What, what, do you, what would you like to see in the schools, say? Um, well, when Maddie went to school um, at Mound Elementary, um, it, was, it was portrayed as like not a big deal. You know, it's, she looks normal, she acts normal, so, safety was not a big issue. So what I want to bring into the school system is seizure safe schools where mm -hmm. students and faculty are educated with the different types of epilepsy, the different types of medications, and how to properly um, monitor a child with epilepsy or an adult. So. I had one of my patients with uh, had, uh, a very rare form of lung cancer we got that fixed. He went to cook school, culinary school. He ended up cooking in a men's club, and uh, he decided that uh, Peruvian marching powder would be a great thing to do in the back kitchen when he fell on the floor having a seizure from an overdose of drugs. Uh, one of the very drunken uh, members of the club took a uh, uh, something to keep him from harming himself. He took oh. a cooking knife and pointed it the wrong way. Oh. Uh, so there's things we need to educate for everybody uh, uh, in terms of protecting the airway, mm -hmm. uh, 911. Uh, I, I don't know if she has the, the uh, Valium at school or something to help oh, out yes. with. Uh, an EAP, uh, so the educational... Oh, the uh, IEP, the yes. IEP for you guys in California. So mm -hmm. the educational program is that all these things are integrated and required by 
by law. Are there states that have new the new legislation aimed towards uh, seizure safe schools there? Texas is the fourth state to enact seizure safe schools. Um, I believe there are four in total, Illinois, um, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's just, it's I'm a, trying to remember. But we need to do it in California. <laughs> yes. That's really the point. And, and yes. so with Epilepsy Foundation, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at doing that. Now, uh, uh, Madeline's been through some unusual, it's not just taking a pill and, oh, she's going to outgrow it. What, what are the things that, uh, what she, I know you've been overeducated now, more than <laughs> M MD is mother's degree in your house. <laughs> yeah. So um, Maddie had a cortical dysplasia, which is a part of her brain, um, all the layers of the sulcus and I forget. Um, That's fine. We're, we're, we're <laughs> didn't good. develop completely. So mm -hmm. that was a, the center, the epicenter, if you will, no, of her earthquake. seizure. No. Mm -hmm. And so I remember the doctor calling me Halloween, telling me that the only way to stop her seizures were, would be to remove that cortical dysplasia from her right frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. And I just remember the panic in my heart and the panic yeah. in my, the emptiness in my stomach. And, cause she was only three at the time. Yeah. And we went and had it did that, mm -hmm. and she rolled out of that surgery, having seizures, mm -hmm. and then we took some time to let her heal to see if the seizures would go away, because the brain needs to heal from such a invasive surgery, and then, um, sorry, and then after that, um, we got a second opinion. Mm -hmm. We went back in, got a little closer to the motor strip, mm -hmm. and. She was seizure free for 40 days. Mm -hmm. Then the seizures came back with vengeance. And so she's been hospitalized again, uh, but she's on a, she's on a, she has five medications that she's on that's controlling it mm -hmm. a lot better than it was. So she was having like 100 seizures a day. Mm -hmm. And after her first surgery, it was like 70 seizures. And after her second surgery, it was 40 seizures, 30 to 40 seizures. So although it's helped, it's, we were aiming for seizure free. Yes. Well, that's, that's what we want for our children. Is yeah. We want them to outlive us, which is very important, and mm -hmm. for them to have good, good lives. Uh, then the side effects of medications can be pretty sedating. You go, great, I'm seizure free, but uh, I'd like to be able to talk. She's a very interactive uh, little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and she certainly likes looking herself in the monitor, which is most excellent. <laughs> so M Maddie, do you go to school or you, do, you go to, do you go to classes at all? I just graduated from kindergarten and now I'm going to first grade. Oh my goodness gracious. So and your mother's told you the boys are filled with germs and not to kiss them, right? Yeah. <laughs> when boys chase you, you run faster, huh? Yes. Oh, that's good. Well, so, uh, so what can we do as a community? Uh, uh, what, what are the things the Epilepsy Foundation is doing locally? Or, and then do you have events, fundraising events? And we'll, we'll run them. You don't have to remember every single one. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that that runs along. Well, we have two events um, at her school that we're going to do um, in October, mm -hmm. October 20th. And... In November, we have a big brain exhibit that's going to be at our school, too. Ooh. And we're going to have local families, well, families that are in that school, um, speaking about their experience with epilepsy. So we have one, two, three students that I'm aware of mm -hmm. at the time. Um, and Epilepsy Foundation will have three workshops this year. Um, one in Simi Valley, one mm -hmm. in Oxnard, and one in Santa Paula. And then we'll also, there's a big thing coming up in September at the Painted Turtle where Paul Newman mm -hmm. founded. And so we went last year um, to a family camp. So all of us can go, siblings, parents, and usually we couldn't, well, I couldn't, I never dreamt of going to a camp 
and leaving her mm -hmm. with her seizures. So having this opportunity to have an epileptologist and a nurse on campus at the camp to make sure that anybody there, if there's an emergency, there is a, a professional doctor there. Mm -hmm. um, so we went last year and then we got evacuated because yes, of the fires. You. You're welcome. <laughs> well, so yeah, I mean, just in terms of family camps, we do this with Ronald McDonald. We're putting in a Ronald McDonald Family Living Center. Mm -hmm. it, what does it take to get attention in your house if you're not having 100 or 70 or 40 seizures a day? I mean, for your, uh, your siblings, I get to, to special time too. And we get to be together as a family and we are in a safe environment. So it's a it's a wonderful thing. So we'll make sure we have information about Painted Turtle because they are a wonderful organization. Yes, absolutely. Was well, there anything else that you'd, you'd like to, any closing words there that we are seasoned for a reason? I see that's, that's our saying there. We're seasoned for a reason. So one of our, um, one, my colleague Lori, she has a son named Matt who is, I think, 26 years old, mm -hmm. had seizures, still has seizures. Um, He's working and going to school in San Diego, and he started a team um, for the walks. Yep. And they, so he was in charge of the team name, and he wrote "Season for a Reason." And it's, I love the slogan because we're here; they're seizing. They're not seizing for no reason. So we're here to advocate, bring awareness, and to bring a voice and our stories to our community. Well, so we're, we're doing that now, and we have more more to follow. Yes. Ventura, support the Epilepsy Foundation. Let's get seizure-free schools. Time for, for you to get moving. We'll, we'll be right back. Ventura, welcome back. Uh, I was talking earlier just about how if you just sit still long enough, there are people doing things in this town. Uh, I belong to Rotary. I went down to a downtown uh, uh, business uh, gathering and sure enough city center was there uh, i went to a fundraiser and uh, there was someone there that goes oh you really need to meet shonda vilvig from city center <laughs> so uh, as a uh, in our pediatric clinic we uh, care for the same population but tell me about tell me about city center and your how you got there uh, in, in terms of being involved but also the services that are there because that's really what's so important I got involved with the city center because I realized that uh, or came to the realization that I have a lot in common with those kids and families that are there I had a really dysfunctional home life growing up living with an alcoholic and abusive stepfather and my mother's way of coping with that was alcohol, and so I had two alcoholic parents um, in the home. And my mother uh, didn't really have the self-confidence, self-esteem, or um, wherewithal to leave that situation and kind of have a fresh start and a, and a new life for us. And so we were in that situation for eight years until I got into college. And uh, when I learned about what the city center was doing, I'm just trying to make a difference and uh, be involved with a program that can provide those kids a more stable and predictable and less frightening home life situation. Um, the city center is doing an amazing job of changing lives for children and their families. There's a, obviously a, a huge homeless problem in our community and in our uh, in the United States, but we're focused specifically on young children and their parents. So children aged 12 and under um, and their parents, whether that be a single parent or uh, uh, mother and father, and, and regardless of how many kids are in the family, that's the demographic that we're serving and trying to help give a, a fresh jump start on life and turn things around. So regardless of um, if they've been um, abusing a substance um, or addicted or whatever got them into the homeless situation that they're in. We're there to come alongside and give them the tools and the support that they need to turn things around. So um, the first thing we do is have them uh, meet with case management, um, determine what their needs are, if they need um, counseling that's available, licensed marriage and family therapist, um, it's a, it's a working program, so they have to 
buy on to be a part of that program and everything that that entails, which it's a pretty tight ship and mm -hmm. it involves a lot of work on their part. But I think that's where I get so excited is if a parent is willing to do the hard work, um, you know, we're right there alongside them to provide a stable home life for them while they're in transition. And that's what it's really meant to be, is a transitional period between homelessness and them getting back out into their own independent living situation. And it can last a year or two years, however long is required for them to um, really get uh, stable employment, transportation, childcare for their kids, uh, money in the bank account, and be able to go out and pay market level rent again. So we're coming alongside and providing that support. Well, I, I got a, a text message today from a, a physician and his, his two and a half year old was having night terrors and I go, you know, how could I help him? I go, well, you know, I, I take care of children whose nightmares come in the daytime. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. with their picture of, is not on any refrigerator because there is no refrigerator, so. Right, right. Some of these kids have been living in cars, they've been living in um, motels, mobile homes, and some on the street. Um, but the common link is that the parents are ready to do something about it, and they're mm -hmm. ready to actually get it together. And, and some of the kids have been removed from the parent if the parent's um, drug addiction or abusive uh, situation, if they were living with an uh, abusive adult, um, the kids may have been removed, but once the parent um, gets involved at the city center and shows that they've become clean and sober, they've got stable employment and they're doing all the right things, then our case managers work with um, either the foster care system or CPS or whoever is um, involved to reunite the families. And we've seen that on multiple occasions. Um, just this year, we've had 14 graduates from the city center since January who have gone back out to live in their own independent living situation after um, coming to the city center. Well, how, how, what can this community do to support? Do you, do you have annual events or there, what kinds of things come yes, up? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're the only transitional living center in Ventura County that gets no government funding. And so all of our um, support comes from private donations or churches or organizations. And so we rely heavily on just trying to get the word out and raise awareness about what we're doing, which is why today is so wonderful to get to share this. Um, so we do a, an annual event that we call our celebration event, and it's um, uh, to celebrate changed lives for children and families. And we have a different theme each year, but it's a, a dinner, dance, silent auction, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have ongoing throughout the year um, opportunities to give. And we have a, one program that's our monthly giving program. It's called Change for Children. Mm -hmm. So you can go on to the website um, at the city center and you can sign up for Change for Children and pledge to give $20 a month, 30, 40, whatever you're capable mm -hmm. of doing. Or you can give a one-time gift anything is appreciated. One thing that we um, encourage people to do if their heart is really moved to do so is to sponsor a family for a year. And it's $7,500 to sponsor a room. And when you do that, um, we have a, a nice um, event where we move a family in and we introduce the sponsor to that family. We put a plaque outside on the door that has the family or organization's name who sponsored that room that remains there. And it's neat to develop a relationship with that family that's there. Well, Ventura, it's time you people sponsor a room, support this fundraiser. It's time for you to get moving. Go to City Center, look at that website there. Ventura, welcome back. Yeah, as a uh, pediatric pulmonologist, I'm approached all the time about uh, different inventions people have through the Innovation Center in Camarillo, uh, working with Brian and Eric Went. Uh, we look at a number of inventions. Uh, but if you're out there, uh, people come to you with things, and then you need help because there's only so much I can do. I was very, very fortunate for Emily to be passed my way. Uh, by a mutual friend, and she's interested in a career in medicine and working with me. We've had a number of people get into medical school or nursing school, so she uh, took this on kind of like 
Hercules clean, cleaning the stables of the giant horses. Uh, you know, there's a lot of paperwork that goes into this. Uh, so this particular device we're going to talk about today, uh, the person who contacted me, where, where were they from? So the people that we're working with are from Cognita Labs, and they are a team of researchers from Rice University out in Texas, and they're currently located in Orange County, but we're working with them, so they're all over Ventura County now as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing because uh, most doctors don't have a, a real interest in this. They're so busy doing it, and it's just something I've done my whole life. And uh, you've been learning more than you care to about uh, what kinds of things, IRBs and getting up at 6 and 5 in the morning, wherever you live. So, so definitely learned a lot about um, time management with all the different projects we have going on, about IRBs, our institutional review boards. So getting all of the paperwork together, all of the proper documentation, approval from different doctors, social workers, lawyers, just bringing together a team to get things done. Because yeah, we really want this to be part of the economics of Ventura County. We're losing uh, businesses, and we have Amgen here, we've got Baxter here, uh, working up the Innovation Center, trying to work uh, with the, uh, the Navy. And so uh, for me, it's an investment in my community. Uh, for you, you're learning a lot and uh, what are just uh, what are some of the other projects and then we'll, we'll circle back to the cognitive lab so anything to prevent falls or so we do have a project that works with age well biometrics and it is an app that is focused on geriatric patients so people 65 and older who are at risk of falls whether it's because of a neurological problem they have going on or Whatever it may be, it's just a series of exercises that patients have to go through. It is currently being tested with doctors, so we are in the phase of getting everything validated with that. It's just simple tests that people could do at home, whether it's a 10-meter walk or getting up and sitting down, which a lot of elderly people do have difficulty doing without feeling a little woozy or lightheaded. So just by looking at those exercises, we can see what's going on, what's going wrong, and predict a fall up to two days before it occurs. So that's pretty magical. I think uh, Tom right. Cruise had a movie about being able to predict crimes and being able to predict a fall before it happens. Uh, pretty remarkable stuff. So for me, as a pediatric pulmonologist, I, I get kids every day, I go, gosh, I really can't believe that you're on the medication that your doctor's given you and your lungs are just, are, they're a mess. So they're, they're, you're coughing at night, you can't participate in physical education. Uh, are you taking your medication? Mom, are you watching? Well, no, 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 they're, they're eight years old now. They can take their own medication. Or they're 12 years old, they're 14. Oh, God help us all, they're 13. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about this device and how it's there to help me out. Right, so this device is called the CapMedic device, and it essentially just helps us monitor how patients are using their inhaler by taking patients through a series of steps. It's the steps they would regularly do. It's just with this device, we're able to monitor it, see where our patients are going wrong. And additionally, we do have a PEF adapter that comes with it, which measures their lung function, essentially, how well their lungs are working. So we are basically using the device to improve their method and using the PF adapter to see how well the device is really helping their lungs improve. So their peak expiratory flow Correct. or PF. So this, when they blow as hard as they can, does that change because, uh, because of that? Because yeah, on, on house, I think, in fact, any of the instruction, you, you read the instructions, you go, oh, that's teeny tiny little mm -hmm. print in those things. And, uh, uh, well, the pharmacist showed me how to use it. You go like that. Well, no, no, you actually have to put it in your mouth and you have to, well, what, 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 could you walk me through? What, what, is, oh, what sure. does this device tell you how to do properly? Okay, so this device just comfortably sits on top of the inhaler, so there's really not much to it, not much that the kids have to do. We are currently recruiting children 10 through 17, so that age group should not have too much difficulty with this. And then are there any adapters for this uh, uh, peak expiratory flow so that we can follow them at home? Um, so the peak expiratory flow, super simple. This just goes right onto it, snaps right on. And they just use it as they would in the clinic. They just blow into it, and all of this is relayed onto a smartphone or an iPad or whatever smart device that children or their parents may have at home. 
Well, I know if, if they catch me looking in their windows that they're going to call the police and off to wear that ankle bracelet. So this really gives us an insight into what's happening at home and uh, able to follow it. Uh, their parents will have uh, access to the information. Uh, and, and really, we, with an improvement in adherence, we'll see a, a better ability to exercise, sleeping through the night without coughing. Uh, a lot of my parents are very afraid of their children's uh, asthma. And so we really want to give everybody a, a sense of comfort when they mm -hmm. travel or anywhere else. So Ventura, we've talked about a number of things. We've had some very powerful women on this stage you know, talking about the Epilepsy Foundation uh, and all the work that needs to be done there for safe uh, seizure smart schools. Uh, we've uh, heard from the city center and how we really can help these women whose uh, lives may not have been very good themselves and they're having a very difficult time with their children. And now uh, someone who really is looking to achieve uh, in her own life, but also to help me out uh, in terms of improving the, the lives of uh, children uh, and their families with chronic lung disease. Uh, and I appreciate the support of Ventura County Medical Center through our Institutional Review Board. So Ventura, especially children age 10 to 17 with asthma, it's time for you to get moving.